We've seen more violence overnight, dozens of people arrested as those protests got out of control again. Another police car set on fire. And I sat down with the man in the middle of it all, Officer Darren Wilson, telling his side of the story for the first time. I used my door to try and push him back and yell at him to get back. And again, he just pushed the door shut and just stares at me. And as I look back at him, all of a sudden, punches start flying. He, he threw the first punch? Yes. He threw the first one and hit me in the uh, left side of my face. I just know there was a barrage of swinging and grabbing and pulling for about 10 seconds. At some point, he was actually in the car physically. Like, he had ducked his head and came into the vehicle with me. Where's your gun at that point? I keep it on my right hip. Mm -hmm. I take it out, and I come up, I point it at him. And when I said I said, get back or I'm going to shoot you. And then his response, immediately, he grabbed the top of my gun. And when he grabbed it, he said, you're too much of a to shoot me. And while he's doing that, I can feel his hand trying to come over my hand and get inside the trigger guard and try and shoot me with my own gun. Wilson got off two shots in the car before Brown started to run. And after I fired that shot, I look over, he's running. It went off that time. It did go off that time. He starts to run, and I see the dust cloud behind him, and I'm like, okay, I missed. That was my, the round didn't hit him. Then I go to exit my car, and when I'm getting out, I use my walkie, and I say, shots fired, send more cars. And I start chasing after Michael Brown. You described Michael Brown when you saw him in that moment in the car as a demon. Do you know where that word came from? Do you know, it, 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 what were you seeing at that moment? It was just such a high level of intensity and aggression and anger that it was almost unfathomable to even see it. Like, how is this happening? Like, it was shock. And you're positive. You're positive you'd have that exact same reaction if he were white. Yes. Some of the witnesses have said they thought you were out of control, that somehow you had snapped. Mm -hmm. That would be incorrect. There was never, the only emotion I'd ever felt was fear, and then it was survival and training. We know from the autopsy reports that uh, no shots went into Michael Brown from the back. Mm -hmm. Did you fire any shots when he was running away? No. So you only fired to his front? Correct. As you know, some of the eyewitnesses have said, when at that moment when he turned around, he turned around and put his hands up. That would be incorrect. Incorrect. No way? No way. Some witnesses have also said that they actually saw you stand over him That'd and shoot incorrect. him the top of his head. That would be incorrect. And he's down now. Yes. You know he's dead? Yes. You know, they tell you afterwards, you know, there's going to be times you don't remember where it's fast, sometimes where it's slow. Well, that was the point of, like, the slow motion for me. And I saw the face that he had go blank. His, everything was just blank. And I knew immediately that he had passed. And what did you think? I need help. You know, I got back on the radio and I said, uh, send a supervisor in every car we have. You'd never even shot your gun before, and now a man is dead. Mm -hmm. Does that put you in shock? What is it, you know, wh wh what's going through your mind at that point? What are you feeling at that point? Shock would be a good way to describe it. And there's not a cop out there who goes out there and like, you know, I'm going to use my gun today. No one wants to. No one ever wants to do that. And it just happened, and it happened in a minute. The Brown family came out with a statement where they said, we are profoundly disappointed that the killer of our child will not face the consequences of his actions. What do you think when you hear that? I think those are grieving parents who are mourning the loss of their son. They're saying that you have to face the consequences of your actions. Mm -hmm. You think there's anything you can say to them that could change their minds or change their hearts? I don't think there's anything they could say, but again, you know, I'm sorry that their son lost his life. It wasn't the intention of that day. It's what occurred that day. And there's no, nothing you can say that's going to make a parent feel better. Do you feel any remorse? Everyone feels remorse when a life's lost. Like I told you before, I never wanted to take anybody's life. You know, that's not the good part of the job. That's the bad part of the job. So yes, there is remorse. George, as you know, a lot of reaction to the interview and people not only listening closely to what he said, but how he said it. And, and many people are, are questioning his demeanor. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's very straightforward, very clinical in describing mm -hmm. what happened. He's been telling exactly the same story since he first went back to the police station that afternoon. But you're right, not a lot of emotion bubbling up there. He sees himself simply as a police officer doing his duty that day and he's not going to give much more than, than those facts and in fact he told you he just felt that he was doing his job and because of that he says he has a clean conscience